This wiggling tail belongs to a snake. A snake who needs help because he's stuck in a utility hole cover. Luckily, someone called in a pro, Bruce the Snake Rescuer. But even Bruce had never seen anything like this. The snake's back half was above ground, which meant the other half was down there. This poor little guy was totally stuck, trapped in a dark hole, alone, and probably feeling really scared. But Bruce didn't waste any time. He lifted the heavy iron cover and brought the snake into the light. The snake was probably so relieved to be out of that hole, but really frightened too. After all, he was still stuck. And a scared snake might try to bite, so Bruce had to be careful. Luckily, his new friend turned out to be a harmless, non-venomous gopher snake. So even though he still needed to be cautious around this wild animal, it was one less thing he had to worry about. But he still had no idea how he was gonna get the snake unstuck. Bruce tried gently pushing the snake and gently pulling the snake. No good, he wouldn't budge. Meanwhile, the snake kept trying to slither away, but he couldn't move an inch. The snake's belly looked a little swollen which probably wasn't helping. And to make things even worse, the solid iron cover was really heavy. Bruce was having trouble holding it up while he worked to get the snake loose. He didn't want to accidentally drop it and hurt the snake even more. He wished he had two sets of hands. And his wish came true, sorta, because another person happened to walk by. Bruce asked them if they would hold the cover for him while he focused on freeing the snake. And even though that person was a teeny bit afraid of snakes, okay, they were actually pretty afraid, but they still helped. Sometimes all it takes is a couple of fingers to be a hero. With both hands now free, Bruce got right back to work. The snake was probably still feeling scared, but he stayed calm. It was almost like he knew these people were trying to help. He didn't want to make their job harder by getting defensive. But even if the snake was beginning to feel safer, Bruce was growing more worried. He desperately wanted to help the snake, but nothing he tried was working. Just when Bruce was starting to think this rescue was impossible, more people stopped to help. And they brought something super useful, baby oil the perfect tool to unstick snakes. They squirted baby oil all over the snake's belly. Then they started wiggling. Slowly, slowly, come on. They wiggled for what felt like forever. Until finally, the snake was free. Bruce was so happy and so was the snake. It had taken the rescuers over an hour to pull the snake free. And after Bruce cleaned off the oil and made sure the snake was okay, it was time for the best part of any snake rescue, a safe release back into the wild. After a final goodbye kiss, of course, as he glided out of Bruce's hands, the snake thought about his rescuers, strangers who had come together when he needed them the most, and pulled off an incredible rescue. Wolfgang needs our help. He weighs 90 pounds. Much bigger than a dog his size should be. How'd you get so big, Wolfgang? He was living by himself when we found him. So nobody knows. Nobody but Wolfgang. However it happened, it's now hard for him to walk. And he feels tired a lot. Wolfgang loves to wag his tail, but even that's tough for him. But we're here to help. We're gonna get you moving until you're a little smaller. And you can wag your tail like the goofy dog you are. You ready? We'll take it slow at first and not go too far. You're doing it, Wolfgang. We know that wasn't easy. You need
need a nice green meal to recharge. You like those veggies, huh? And uh, Wolfgang, the deck is not a healthy meal. Let's get back out there. Hey, you're starting to like this, aren't you? Good boy. Okay, let's see if we've made progress. Look, you're getting smaller. We just have to keep your body moving. I know, I know, walking isn't that exciting. Try this, the water treadmill. You can bring your workout buddy too. When we first started, you were too big for that dog door. But now, you can slip right through. So don't give up, pup. We've been exercising for six months. Time for a tail check. You couldn't really wag before. But now, that's a happy wag, Wolfgang. With every day, we see more and more of your wagging tail. It's taken months. Time to check your weight. Wolfgang, you're finally 30 pounds. Hey, a perfect size for you. <laughs> but are you feeling better, Wolfgang? <laughs> go, Wolfgang, go! You used to have trouble walking. Now, you have too much energy. You look like a happy pup to us. With a tail that's always wagging. We love you, Wolfgang. We're so glad you're feeling all better. This little French fry is named Turbo. He was born without any front legs. And he was being picked on by his brothers and sisters. It wasn't very nice. He needed a new place to live with a family who moved more at his speed. So a kind lady at the vet clinic decided to take Turbo home. Even though Turbo didn't have any front legs, he was just like any other puppy. He wanted to play and go outside, but it wasn't easy, not even a little. But did that stop Turbo? Nope. His mom would hold out a little treat and Turbo would use all his strength to get to it. It helped his back legs get stronger. But it wasn't enough. Turbo needed something more. He needed wheels. Problem was, Turbo was tiny. Even the smallest dog carts were too big for him. So his mom tried making her own carts. She made the first one out of a helicopter toy, but it didn't quite work. So she tried a few more. Turbo was losing hope. He was trying so hard, but it still wasn't working. Then something amazing happened. A guy who makes parts for airplanes heard about Turbo's story online, and he designed a cart just for him. It was orange and had lime green rollerblade wheels. Looking good, Turbo. But would it work? At first, Turbo didn't know what to do. He would walk a little, but he was still discouraged. Then his mom had an idea. Maybe Turbo just needed someone to play with. So she brought out her other dog. And off Turbo went. And went. And kept on going. As Turbo grew up, he learned to do even more. 
like jump up on the couch. What are you doing, sir? You got your own chair? And wear a cool denim vest. <laughs> and do the cha-cha with his best friend, Ruby. As soon as these two bumped noses, they were inseparable. Turbo could have decided to just give up, but he didn't. He kept going and going and going. And now he's got the best life, full of friends, adventure, and love. Go Turbo, go! Logan, that's a ton of fur. You look like you're wearing a spider costume. But don't worry, pup. We know you're not a spider. You're just a sweet little dog whose fur has grown way too long and way too heavy. Your legs hurt when you walk, and you can't see anything. I bet you're really hot, too. You haven't had anyone to take care of you in a really long time and you're probably feeling pretty scared. But we're here for you, puppy. And we're gonna cut your heavy, heavy fur so the whole world can meet the special dog inside. Are you ready? Let's get trimming. First, the vet is gonna give you some special medicine to help you relax. Do you hear the buzzing sound? Don't be nervous. It's just our electric hair trimmers. Regular old scissors aren't enough for this big of a haircut. And we're being extra gentle so we don't accidentally pull your hair. Just a little off the sides, please. Okay, a lot off the sides. And the top. And everywhere. I think we're starting to see a little bit of puppy in here. This is the ear. Whoa, look how much we trimmed off just one ear. You must be feeling cooler and hearing better already. And look what else we found. It's your tail and your legs. You had so much extra fur on your body, Logan. It's like you've been carrying a whole nother dog with you. Almost done. Just a little more. There you are. <laughs> your little keeper. <laughs> it's so good to finally see your face, sweet pup. And now that your hair is shorter, we can give you a proper bath. You probably haven't been this clean in a long time. Let's get you all dried off. Wow, Logan, we can finally see you. And you can see us too. You're looking great, Logan, but you need a little more help. All that heavy fur made your legs weak and wobbly. So you need to exercise your legs to make them strong again. There you go. You're doing it. It must be so much easier to move without all that heavy fur. And after a little more healing, you're ready for something really special. A forever home. That's right, you have a new mom and dad. What do you think about that, Logan? Oh my goodness, look at that tail wet. I see that tail going crazy. Your tail is telling us you like them a lot. Logan, when we first met you, you were scared and alone. And you kind of looked like a spider. But now you're the beautiful, happy dog we knew was under that fur all along. And you're going home with a brand new family. A family who will always keep you happy and trimmed and give you all the love that you deserve. We love you too, Logan. And we're so glad you're feeling all better. Billow the Cat is best friends with... A monkey! Um, what? A cat who is friends with a monkey, and not just any monkey, 
a bouncy baby monkey named Avni. Pillow and Avni love each other. They explore outside together and play up high together and snuggle in boxes together. They never want to be apart. They're kind of obsessed with each other and definitely best animal friends. Avni is a little different from other monkeys. She only has one arm. So sometimes she needs some extra help. Especially when she was little. <coughs> Luckily, Avni lives in an animal orphanage where people love her and give her lots of help. But the people can't be around Avni all the time. There are other animals to take care of too. <coughs> Avni really needed someone who would always be by her side. And Billo came to the rescue. Billo loved Avni right away. And Avni loved Billo right back. Before long, she started thinking of Billo kind of like a mom. A mom with pointy ears and long whiskers. Now they do everything together. Billo helps Avni go exploring. Up ladders, Across the roof, everywhere. Ooh, look at him go. Okay, I see you. Hey, what are you doing over there? And Avni helps Billow stay clean by making sure she has nothing in her fur. Billow, you really gotta take more showers. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. They're a perfect match. Billow helps teach little Avni how to feel strong and confident. Now, Avni has no problem hanging out with these puppies. We're jumping on this sheep. Hey, Billow, what do you think of that? <coughs> Thanks to Billow, Avni feels brave enough to go off on her own. Sometimes she'll even leave the orphanage. But Avni never stays away from Billow for too long. Because Billow is her family. And because they love each other. And because who's gonna clean Billow's fur if Avni doesn't do it? Seriously, Billow? I'll buy you a bar of soap. Just kidding. Avni and Billow are best animal friends. And they always will be. Hi, little calf. You're a baby zebu. We'll call you Angel. We heard that your back legs don't work, but you want to walk. And there's got to be a way. We just brought you home, so we'll give you a bubble bath and a kiss on your fuzzy head. Oh, hi. Oh, thanks for the kisses. Time to get all dried off and wrap you in a donut blanket. Then, give you something to eat. Are you ready to try getting on your feet? All you need is a leg up and... Off you go! But we can't hold up your back legs forever. We need something that will help you do it on your own. Like a doggy wheelchair. Hold on. Can a zebu learn to use a dog wheelchair? It's worth a try. We'll get you all strapped in. So far, so good. Good job. There you go. Now you have a pretty good life in the house. You're friends with all the inside pets. There's Davy and Sawyer and Jet, the cat you love to lick. But your cart doesn't work so well outside. And you're getting too big for it anyways. You need some better wheels. 
so we'll take you to the animal hospital to see if they can help. First, the vet makes sure you're healthy. Then, measures you to see what size cart you need. I think your new cart needs to be a little higher. Now, we'll wait for it to come in the mail. Have some banana while we wait. Here's your new cart! I think it's time for you to try running around outside. Don't be nervous, Angel. You can do this. That a girl? You're making friends. With Pumpkin. And Ellie. Pumpkin says, I like you a lot, Angel. Now you can play with the other farm animals outside. There's really nothing you can't do. With just a little help, you learned how to walk. And how to use a cart. Sure, we helped a little. But it was all you, Angel. Seeing your cute little face, your gentle kisses, and the way you never give up makes everything all better. Okay, baby. I'm so scared. As soon as rescuers heard there was a tiny puppy living all alone in this forest, they sprang into action. We drove here, finally managed to find him. He's small and hungry. These woods were no place for a small pup. Probably sleeps in that tire, I would not be surprised. The rescuers needed to get him to a real home. But how? He was too scared to come close. Just in the car, left him to it. This was going to take time. Day two. Back to forest, puppy. He wanted to trust the rescuers, but he had never really been around people before. Come on, babe. Give us a chance. Maybe food would change his mind. He's coming. He's coming. Come on, baby. You can do it. Yay! Oh, baby, he's so cute. But even though the puppy felt safe enough to come out to eat, he still wouldn't come near the rescuers. It was getting colder, and they knew they had to find a way to get him to safety, soon. But you can't rush a rescue. Day three for Forrest Puppy. There he is. He's, he's kind of waiting for us today. Forrest Puppy, come on, Forrest Puppy. The pup was getting more and more comfortable with the rescuers. But as soon as they got close, he'd run away again. They didn't know how long they could wait. He needed to be safe at home with a family. They decided to set up a special crate with food inside. If he got curious and walked in, they could close the door and bring him to safety. And it worked. After an hour and a half of stakeout, patient waiting, we got him. The rescuers were so relieved they could finally bring their little forest puppy safely to the shelter where they realized that the pup was actually a she. They named her Willow. At first, Willow was very shy. She had never lived inside before. It's okay, baby, you can go inside. The rescuers wanted to show her that they were there to help. Hello. But just like in the forest, they knew they had to take it slow. That's when they got an idea. Maybe she'd feel more at home if they introduced her to the other puppies. And she did. Even better, she finally started to trust her rescuers. They were so happy she was feeling safe.
And soon, it was time for her to go to her forever home. Willow still goes back to visit the woods from time to time. But afterwards, she can't wait to go home with her family. We promise it's going to get better, Bunny. When you first came home, your body was frozen like a statue. You couldn't move a muscle. But don't worry, puppy. We know what's wrong and how to fix it. You have an infection, and it's pretty serious. Your muscles have gotten really stiff. You can't bend your legs or move your mouth. You can't even wag your tail. You must be so uncomfortable. But it won't be forever, Bunny. We won't give up on you. We'll take care of you around the clock until you can move and run just like you used to. First, we need to use this IV tube to put some medicine in your body. That will get rid of the infection. Once it's gone, we can work on making your muscles move. We know you're still achy, but try to get some sleep. Does this ice pack feel nice? Good morning. You look like you're feeling a little better and feeling a little hungry. Let's try to give you some food. It's still tough for you to swallow. You'll have to eat liquid food for now. Bunny, you're moving your mouth. That's great. And after breakfast, a warm bath will help you relax your stiff muscles. <laughs> of course, we'll take some kisses. And I know it seems a little strange, but wearing this blindfold for a few weeks will help you stay calm. And that'll help your body heal. Just pretend you're visiting the spa. Bunny, your tail is wagging. It means your muscles are starting to work again. Next, let's see what we can do about your legs. Some gentle stretching and a little bit of massage should start to loosen you up. It's going to take a lot of work to make these muscles move, but we know you can do it. After a few weeks of practice, look at that tail go. You're moving a little better all the time. Do you want to go play in the yard? Good girl. That grass probably feels great. And you're lifting your head. That's a happy pup. Should we try a walk? It's okay. We'll do most of the work. Oh, yeah. oh turn it. That's a good job. That's a good step. I think you'll be walking on your own real soon. You look happy today, Bunny. We can tell by all that tail wagging. What is it, girl? What do you want to show us? Bunny, you're standing on your own. Oh my gosh, you're so brave and strong. You sure are brave and strong. Does this mean you're ready to? I guess it does. You're walking. Go Bunny. We love seeing you move. And you're so happy. You just want to follow us everywhere now. And we don't mind at all. You're one of the bravest dogs we've ever met, Bunny. It takes someone really special to overcome so much. And you are definitely one special dog. We love you, Bunny. And we're so glad that you're feeling all better. Phoenix and Ghost spent every day together. They're each other's family. But their horse herd shared land with people who lived nearby. They thought the herd had gotten too big and too close and decided to catch the horses to move them away. But when Phoenix and Ghost were put in pens, Phoenix jumped the fence and escaped. But Ghost couldn't. When he came back for her, she was gone. Had he lost Ghost forever? But then, a kind lady named Claire wanted to help. Maybe she could reunite their family. Though she didn't know where Ghost was, adopting Phoenix was the first step. I felt this connection with him and I was excited for him to be released. 
When Phoenix arrived at Claire's home, he was so thankful to be in such a wonderful new place. So they say a horse that rolls all the way over three times, and he did it four, is an exceptional horse. Claire could tell he missed Ghost, but also saw how happy he was in his new home. A beautiful, big ranch with room to run free, explore, and more rolling. I guess Phoenix likes to roll. Claire also introduced him to other horses, but without Ghost, it wasn't the same. Then, two years later, Claire saw a picture of a horse who needed a new home, and this horse looked a bit like Ghost. She was white, like Ghost, but also had the same brown ears and the same brown knees. It was Ghost! It was like seeing a ghost. Going to get her was just so exciting. When the day came to bring Ghost to Claire's ranch, Phoenix was on the other side of the hill. But when Ghost let out a little neigh, he couldn't believe it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Phoenix and Ghost back together again. They'd missed each other so much. To a wild horse's family is everything. The bonds that they form are so precious and so deep. There isn't any doubt that they know and love each other. Now Phoenix and Ghost are never apart. It doesn't matter if they're running across open fields, galloping through snow, or basking in the morning sun. Phoenix and Ghost, they get to grow old together, and that's the best thing. You'll be safe soon, pup. Rosie's cold and wet and her legs are too tired to walk. Don't worry, Rosie, we're here to rescue you. We're going to help you get stronger so you can stand, walk, and run again. First, we'll take you to the vet for a checkup. The vet says you definitely need a bath. You have some bugs in your fur, but we'll get them all out. Now let's dry you off so you're nice and warm. Does that feel good? Next, you need something tasty to fill your belly. You must be so hungry. Look at how fast you're eating. Now that you're all clean and feeling a little better, let's take you home for the night. We're going to get you back up and walking so you can find a forever family of your own. We made you a bed in this cozy drawer. You look so comfy in there. Good morning, Rosie. Today's the day we're going to practice standing. You got to stand before you walk, after all. Want to give it a try? Come on, you got this. Oh, so close. Hmm, maybe you're not quite ready. Your legs are still too weak. So, let's get them stronger. Paddle, paddle, paddle. Go, go, go. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Go, go, go. Go, yes, yes, go. All right, should we try again? Rosie! You're standing! This is amazing. Whoops! You did a great job, Rosie. You just have to keep trying until you're standing on your own. Now that you can stand, it's time to try walking, one step at a time. This leash will help you practice. Yes! You're doing it! And before we know it, Rosie, you're taking your first real steps. Your foster parents are so proud of you. 
And so are we. All of a sudden, you're playing like a puppy. Get him, Rosie. High five, little pup. Now that you can walk, there's just one thing left to try. Running! Maybe you still need a little practice, but you've got plenty of time for that. With every day that passes, we love you more and more. Your foster family loves you too. And they have a surprise for you. They're going to adopt you. You have a forever family all your own. When we first found you, you were so scared and alone. But now, you're all smiles. We're so glad you're finally feeling all better. Rosie, look okay. here. Where are you this morning? Hi, little baby Clyde. These little squirrels are tiny babies, but they're about to get big. <laughs> One day old. Two days old. Three days old. You're doing so well, little buddy. It's time for you to meet your new brothers and sisters. Are you ready? Seven days old. I need so much help. Look at her. Isn't she just a little peanut of joy? Eleven days old. Uh oh, somebody's ready for breakfast. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh boy, oh boy. Fourteen days old. What are you doing? Hey, you gotta go back inside. 18 days old. Look who is trying to open his eyes. I wonder what he's going to think when he sees what his mom looks like. <laughs> 19 days old. Okay, my eyes are open. Now what? 20 days old. Hi. Look, can you show everybody how big you are? How about that? How about that? Oh. In case you're wondering about the cutest thing in the world, it's definitely sleeping baby squirrel. 22 days old. Lazy days. <laughs> 26 days old. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, you found a good sleeping spot, did ya? 28 days old. Are you learning how to climb today? First day on the new branch. You work this thing. I can do it. I can. I don't need your help, Mom. I can do this by myself. I'm a big girl now. <laughs> can I help you with that? Hey. Forty-five days old. Ooh, you got yours out already. Come on, Clyde. You're gonna have to do better. You gotta have to do better, buddy. Fifty days old. Look, our little buddy Clyde. He's getting so big. Hi, Clyde. Are you okay with your your new cage? Last one before you get to go outside. Sixty days old. Not babies anymore. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Tinkerbell. Guess what? It's release day today. Is everybody excited? Are you excited? 
<laughs> okay, let's do this. The baby squirrels are big now. So there's their nest. It's up in the tree. Their new home. Hi. And ready for their grown-up life. Get up there! Yay! Love you! From baby squirrels to big squirrels. Come on, you can do it! Hugo's legs are having trouble. They stretch out like a starfish. He wants to walk and play with other dogs, but for now, he has to crawl. Don't you worry, Hugo. We know just what you need. Lots of love <laughs> and practice. You can do it. You go. <laughs> to build up your leg muscles, you're going to practice in water. This will help you get used to walking. We've got you. Go, you go, yay! See, look how strong you are now. And fast. But we still have a lot of work to do. Not yet. We're going to put tape on your paws to help them stay under you when you walk. Looking good, Hugo. Uh oh. Your front paws are turning in a little. And you're having a little trouble walking again. It's a problem, but we'll beat it. Right, Hugo? We got you these casts to help straighten your paws. Come on. Here he comes. Looking strong. Did they work? <laughs> yeah, they did. You know what? <gasps> You're ready to play with the big dogs. And try climbing down the stairs. You're moving faster than before. Walking, jogging, and pretty soon, Hugo! You're zipping all around the yard. Your family's so proud of you. It's hard to believe that you used to be that puppy who crawled around and dreamed of walking. And now you can run faster than us. We're so happy you're all better. It's a mama raccoon, and she has babies. But she's stuck in a basement wall. They really need to get the mama and her babies out. Luckily, someone called for animal rescuers. Right away, the rescuers knew this would be a pretty tricky rescue. They had to take the babies out of the wall. But the mama wasn't ready to let them do that. She didn't want them anywhere near her babies. Mamas can be like that. A little too overprotective. The rescuers decided to distract the mama by making a lot of noise. 
Okay, there she goes. It worked for a little bit, but then... Oh, she does not look happy. The rescuers moved fast to get the babies out. They used special raccoon grabber claws to gently reach in and pull them up. So I have a grabber claw here. I grabbed it because the rescuers used a, gra used a grabber claw. I don't know how well it will grab raccoons, but this thing sure works. <laughs> this is my dog. Mm, I would recommend it for a stuffed animal rescue, not a real animal rescue. Their grabber claw was meant to pick up real animals. This thing here is a toy. Okay, two babies are out. One to go. Oh, there's the mother. She's coming. Uh-oh. Mama's back. They better hustle up or Mama is not going to be happy. They grabbed the last baby just in time. She's coming in to get her baby. you got to be careful here. She won't hesitate to bite us. Raccoons mean serious business, especially when they don't know that you're trying to help their babies. Those are some very brave rest. They put all the babies in a soft bag and said goodbye to mom. See you outside. They had a special plan to get her out. The rescuers knew that if they brought the babies outside, the mama would eventually come out on her own. So they placed one in the yard. This raccoon is probably thinking, But the baby didn't have to wait long. The mama crept from under the house and ran off with baby number one. The mother just came out and grabbed her one baby and took it over the fence into that backyard. So we're going to place these babies in our baby box and she can grab them. The rescuers placed the other two babies in a special box so that the mama could find them. Then they sealed up the hole into the basement so the raccoons couldn't get lost in there again. Mama still isn't back. We're back on the job site the next day to check on the babies in the box and we'll see if Mom took the other two. The door is open and they're gone. So you can go look in there. She took her babies. That's a very good mama. She was so protective of her little babies. Animal rescuers are the best. It got a little scary there at one point. But they were brave and worked super hard to get those little raccoons to safety. I'm sure the mama would thank them if she could. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. Phoenix is feeling kind of sad. He was found by himself and isn't feeling well. He has a problem with his fur. We've got you, Phoenix. We're going to help your fur grow back and make you feel so happy. First, we got to go to the vet. We'll clean you. <laughs> Are we dancing? And give you medicine. It's for your fur, Phoenix. You also have to eat. See, you're hungry. Okay, we're done. Not so bad, right? Show everyone how beautiful you look now. Your fur is growing back already. Oh, handsome dude. Your fur is better. 
but something's definitely still wrong. You're still not happy. How can we help, Phoenix? Phoenix, but that's a little friend. Wait, we got an emergency call. A kitten needs our help. Oh, they're tiny. Ruby's too little and won't eat. You need a toothbrush and a blanket and a tiny bottle. What's this, Ruby? Ruby! You're bigger now! And kind of funny. Watch out! Phoenix doesn't really like playing. He's too sad. That's Phoenix's tail! Phoenix! Are you licking Ruby? <laughs> That's very nice! And you're playing! You're happy! And it's all because of you, Ruby. We helped Phoenix's fur grow back. And got Ruby to eat. But what you really needed to feel better was a friend. We love you guys. B the cat has a very important job. I mean, if she doesn't pet these chickens, who will? And what about these goats? They need pets too, you know. Oh, and the pig. We absolutely cannot forget about this pig. Uh, but not that. That's just a sandwich. But B isn't just petting everyone for fun. Well, not just for fun. She's actually making sure all the animals at the hospital know that they're safe and loved. It's a busy job for one cat, but B doesn't mind. Because she remembers when she was a patient here. She was brought in as a stray kitten and was really afraid of everything. But the vets were so nice to her, which made being in the hospital a lot less scary. B loved all the attention the vets gave her. And they loved having her around. So when B got better, instead of finding someone else to adopt her, they decided to adopt her themselves. That was the second greatest day of her life. We'll get to the first greatest in a bit. B realized that other animals staying at the hospital probably felt nervous too. So she made it her mission to make every new patient feel safe and comfortable. There, there. Everything's gonna get better soon. It's all good. We are gonna take care of you. You got nothing to worry about, friend. Uh, B, that is not a patient. That is a slice of pizza. And that is a taco. Okay, you're doing great. Life at the hospital was pretty perfect, except for one thing. No matter how many pets she gave or how many new friends she made, eventually the patients always went home. But that was a good thing. After all, she didn't want them to need a vet. Still, she felt a little lonely sometimes. Then one day, everything changed when Peggy arrived. Peggy was a stray kitten just like Bee, who'd injured her paw and needed time to heal. Bee could sense that there was something special about this new patient. And when Bee tried to give her a welcome pet, Peggy petted right back. Soon, Peggy started following Bee everywhere. 
and doing everything Bee did. If Bee wanted to watch bird videos, Peggy did too. If Bee wanted to spin french fries, Peggy did too. Wait, is french fry spinning some kind of cat game? And if so, what are the rules? And best of all, Peggy loved taking care of the other patients. Just like B. Usually they did the rounds together, but sometimes Peggy handled it all by herself. Because even a dedicated hospital cat like B can't be on duty all the time. B and Peggy became really close. They were like sisters. B was so happy, but she was sad too because she knew eventually someone would show up to take Peggy home. Or at least that's what she thought. But the vets had fallen in love with Peggy just like Bee had. And since Peggy didn't already have a home, they decided to adopt her just like they did with Bee. The two of them were gonna be cat sisters and best friends forever. And when Bee realized that, you guessed it, that was the greatest day of her life. It's a 911 puppy emergency. Baby Shiner was found by himself outside. He's so tiny and isn't feeling well at all. Don't be scared, puppy. We're gonna do everything we can. We're gonna make you all better. Our first stop is the vet. We check your whole body, Shiner. Your eyes, your tiny toes, and look at your cute tail. The vet says we have to clean you give you some medicine, and lots of puppy food. Make sure you eat all of it. How are you feeling now? Oh, that's okay. The vet's gonna give you an operation now to make you feel stronger. Let's go, buddy. You did so well, Shiner. Good boy. Have some more food. You're hungry. You're still very tired, aren't you? Close your eyes, Shiner. We'll see you in the morning. Hi, Shiner. Today is a big day. You're going home from the vet. We'll wrap you in a nice new blanket so you're warm and take you to your new home. You seem like you're getting a bit bigger. Wanna try to play a little? We love how you always do that, Shiner. Two little barks at the same time. Wait, is that you, Shiner? You're playing like a healthy puppy. Now it's time for a rest. Sweet dreams, little puppy. Shiner! You're not tiny anymore. You're huge. And everyone loves you. There you go, buddy. There you go. <laughs> You're a very popular dog. Hey, where are you going? Did you find your best friend, Blakely? Okay, dogs, have fun. We're so proud of you, you big, happy dog, who still does two little barks at the same time. <laughs> So glad you're feeling all better. Oh.
Dodo Kids. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.